Hey guys, this is Kate Kennedy, Blitzy Blogger, and I'm really excited to be here and share this project with you. So I'm going to start by using this Canson watercolor paper, and it comes in 12 by 18, so I just cut off about 6 inches to get a 12 by 12 um, piece of paper. I'm just going through some of the products that I'm using. Most of it is from the Crate Paper Craft Market line, and then I'm also going to use some Distress inks to create a watercolor background. And this is a super, super easy process. You just put your Distress Ink on some old packaging. I think that's like from some thickers or something. And spray it with water and then tap it down onto your watercolor paper. You can also use cardstock or anything you have on hand. You could also do it on top of pattern paper if you want to. So now I'm going to start assembling the layers that are going to go behind my photograph to kind of give it a place to rest. And I will end up cutting down, this is a 4 by 6 picture from our wedding, but I will cut it down to 4 by 4 because I just feel like it doesn't need all that extra. It's kind of a lopsided picture to where we're on the very far right and then the whole left hand side is just kind of, you know, decor really. And it, I think it just throws off the balance of the layout to have it be so long. So I think up, making it a perfect square ends up working out a lot better for, for this particular design that I'm doing. So I wanted to talk a second about Distress Inks. And you saw me use the mini Distress Ink Pad, but the, you don't have to use that. You can use the regular size one. You can use the watercolor marker or the Distress Ink marker. You can use the reinkers or the stains, any, any product like that, or just regular watercolors. And use the same technique by putting it on the packaging and then you know uh, pressing or smushing it onto the paper. So you kind of saw there my original thought and then that this is when I realized I want to make it a perfect square. So I end up cutting the photograph down and then also cutting down some of the mats behind the picture and I had kind of freehand cut those so I am going to take my paper trimmer and make sure I have some nice straight lines. I would say 80% of the time I use layers behind a photograph I just freehand cut them but then there are some times when I do want it to be a nice square with straight edges and this was one of those times. Originally I thought I was going to put the picture in the center but I do end up moving it over to the right a little bit. I like to use this dimensional adhesive behind my photographs when I have a bunch of paper layers just to get it to stand up a little bit. It's not very thick uh, adhesive and a lot of these products that I'm using like the watercolor paper and the Distress inks and some of the adhesives and things you can find in the everyday section of the Blitzy store or the Blitzy website which has tons of things that aren't part of the event. So they're available all the time and they keep adding new things. Now a lot of this crepe paper stuff was from an event that happened a couple, they had it on the website a couple of weeks ago. So I'm also taking one of these glassine bags and if you're a paper crafter you probably or a crafter in general you probably have some of these laying around I'm just folding it to be just a little bit larger than the photograph and I'm using this Tombow extreme adhesive because it's the ultimate adhesive I think it's great for things that have weight to them and it's also great for things with slick surfaces like a glassing bag so I'm gonna put the paper layers with the picture on top of that and I'm just tucking in a little gold or half of a little gold doily behind there. I'm also taking some of this gold thread and I'm going to kind of wad it up and I thought maybe I could staple it to get it to hold in place. That doesn't work so don't even waste your time. So what I'm going to do is use some of this Ranger multi matte medium to make a few little dots just to have a, a place to, for the thread to be secured down behind the photograph and then also just straight on the layout and because it dries matte you can't see it at all whereas glossy accents is a great adhesive also but it dries shiny so you do see it so this is a great alternative with I think it has kind of the same same holding power as the glossy accents but again it's invisible I believe this is also available in the everyday section of the Blitzy shop so now I'm just going to add my title which this is from the there's a 12 by 12 chipboard sheet that comes with the collection 
and that's where that comes from. And I'm just going to add some pop dots on the bottom of the letters because I have all those paper layers underneath there to make it lay like flat. I needed to add some dimension. I did add the word our love, but I think I end up changing that. These little triangles are their squares really, but I just turned them to like diamonds that are half gold and half colored are also from the 12 by 12 chipboard sheet. And then I'm going to add in some different stickers and things. And I believe everything that I use is from one crepe paper collection or another. Some are from the new craft market. And then a few of the embellishments I end up using are from the notes and things collection. And I'm going to end up adding on this confetti. Oh, there's also some from the confetti. The confetti um, sticker sheet has the same shape as the chipboard, but it's in flat stickers and I end up adding some of those. I thought about putting all these word stickers here on the bottom but I felt like it kind of cluttered it up too much and I wanted that sort of watercolored background to be kind of the busiest thing or the the most predominant thing in the background instead of all of these little words. Even though I do like them I just felt like it wasn't exactly the look I was going for with this particular picture. So you can see there I have my glossy accents in this fine line bottle and I believe those are, you can also get glossy accents and maybe these bottles um, in the everyday section. They're awesome because glossy accents always gets clogged up and the, the cap on this has a little um, thing that goes into the, the nozzle to keep it from getting clogged up. Plus you get very precision like application with that really thin knob or really thin nozzle, sorry, or tip, whatever you want to call it. So I did add some washi tape in the top left hand corner which I do end up changing also. Really scrapbooking for me is such a huge process because I, it's almost like I have too many ideas sometimes. I think, oh I could do this, I could do this, and I could do this, and I really have to kind of work my way through them, the, all the ideas, and then kind of pair it back because they don't all always work together. So I don't know if you guys find yourself doing that too or if it's just me. But you can see that I did add some other little accents there. This was one of those layouts that I kind of had to walk away from for a little bit and then come back to. I ended up adding those arrows in the top left of the photograph. And I believe I'm going to add some, oh, this sticker that says best day ever because, you know, it was our wedding day, so it was the best day ever. I'm going to add it on some foam dots. And then I believe I add a little um, kind of like banner sticker to the upper left also. Now in the final photograph you're going to see that it the layout looks just like this that it just has white edges but I did and I think you're going to see it in the video I did cut down this watercolor paper by a quarter of an inch on each side and then um, adhere that to a piece of pink pattern paper just to give it a little more dimension sort of because I felt like the edges of the layout were kind of too plain and I probably could have outlined them but I just really wanted to throw some more pink in there you know I'm a girl that loves pink and gold so that's what I ended up doing here's that little chipboard sheet I was talking about or it's not little it's 12 by 12 but there's a ton of those little diamond shapes or star or square shapes on there I really love those 12 by 12 pieces or chipboard sheets there's always like one or two that I struggle with a little bit, but normally my struggle is it's really pretty and I want to use it, but no, I want to save it. <laughs> so sometimes you just have to overcome that and get it onto the paper because I love it way more on a project than I do sitting on a shelf. So you can see how that watercolor or that Distress ink background dried so perfectly. I would recommend letting it air dry. It doesn't take very long, especially if you kind of blot it a little bit like I, I did. If you use heat on it, I find that it may cause a little bit of warping. Now with this watercolor paper, you're real, I really haven't experienced warping even when I do use heat. But if you did it on something thinner like pattern paper or something that wasn't made to take all that water, you might have some warping. So I just find that with letting it air dry, the chance of that happening is less. So you can see I'm taking this piece of older Dear Lizzie paper that's kind of a watercolory look also, and I'm going to use that to mat the photograph. I did flip it upside down because 
I wanted the darker part of the ombre or gradient to be on the bottom and the lighter part on the top. So I'm just adding some of this extreme Tombow adhesive because that watercolor paper is very, th it's not very thick, it's thicker than pattern paper. And I wanted the layout, I wanted it to have, to stay on to that pattern paper. So I used that Tombow adhesive. So here you can see the final photos of the layout and you can see how pretty that Distress Ink looks in the background. And I just love that act, the gold string there. I did add this one little word sticker that says start here. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you all real soon. Make sure to check out the Blitzy website. Bye!